Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 4 Let us therefore fear, lest, a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, As I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, If they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief, again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today after so long a time, as it is said, Today if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Today's message is entitled, Hold Your Position, Hour by Hour. Hold Your Position, Hour by Hour. Let us pray, loving Lord, we pray now that you would remove the distractions and help us to focus on your word, for Christ's sake. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, a television documentary pointed out that the cheetah survives on the African plains by running down its prey. The big cat, the cheetah, can sprint 70 miles per hour, but the cheetah cannot sustain that pace for long. Within its long, sleek body is a disproportionately small heart, small heart which causes the cheetah to tire quickly. Unless the cheetah catches its prey in the first flurry of springing, it must abandon the chase. You know, sometimes Christians seem to have the cheetah's approach to serving God. We speed into projects with great energy, but lacking the heart for sustained effort, we fizzle out before we finish. We vow to start faster and run harder, when what we really need may be not more speed, but more staying power, more stamina that comes only from a bigger heart. Motion and busyness, no matter how great, yield nothing, yield nothing 
unless we allow God to give us the heart, the staying power. Friend of mine, it is our privilege as children of God to hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, without tiring. At times, you know, the masterly power of temptation seems to tax our willpower to the uttermost and to exercise faith in God seems utterly contrary to all the evidences of sense or emotion. But at those times, our will, our will must be kept on God's side. We must believe that in Jesus Christ is everlasting strength and efficiency. And so hour by hour, we must hold our position triumphantly in God, strong in His strength. We must hold on to Christian principles and the Christian life. And so Jesus admonishes us in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. But all things are possible to them that believe. Mark 9 verse 23 says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And since God is working in you, friend of mine, you can safely set your face as a flint with determination to do God's will. And you can trust God perfectly. In other words, friend of mine, you must make a daily personal surrender to Jesus. You must daily renew your covenant to serve God, to be wholly His, to be His forever. Place no dependence on changeable feelings. Feelings come, feelings go. But plant your feet upon the sure foundation of the promises of God. If you have said, I believe the promises of God and I want to serve God, then that is what we mean by intelligent faith. Your feelings will be troubled sometimes when you see others pursuing a course contrary to the principles of Christ. Like what Lot experienced. Speaking of Lot experience, Abraham's nephew, the Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Yes, my friend, trials and tests of faith will come to you. But I entreat you, friend of mine, to look only to Jesus and allow none of these things to harden your heart or to cause darkness or unbelief. Let nothing cause your faith to fail. Live as in the sight of God. Talk with Jesus every day as you would speak with a friend. He is ready to help you in the sorest trial. He is with you in the gravest perplexity. He is with you in the gravest perplexity. And so we are encouraged in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. And the 16, the Bible says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest, verse 15, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. But our high priest was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So the Bible invites us, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Friend of mine here, the preacher, a feeling of assurance is not to be despised. Nothing is wrong if you get up one day feeling happy in the Lord, feeling the joy of the Lord, wanting to praise Him, and you go to work with a smile on your face and a spring in your heel ah, and a song in your heart singing blessed assurance jesus is mine 
a feeling of assurance is not to be despised. We should praise God for it. Ah, but when your feelings are depressed, do not think that God has changed, that God has abandoned you. Praise Him just as much because you trust in His word and not in feelings. You have covenanted to walk by faith, not to be controlled by feelings. Feelings vary with circumstances. And so I challenge you today, my friend, walk before God by faith and rest fully upon His promises. Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. And so I challenge you, my friend, to walk with Jesus by faith today and hold on to his unchanging hand and vow that by his grace you will live your Christian principles today. Let us pray, loving Father. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for encouraging us to hold steady in our service for you, to hold steady in living for you. May we be conscious of your keeping power today and always is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.